All right. So, like in the announcement uh, set, this a Python workshop is just basics. Uh, I will try to get you like used to like the basics of programming and more specifically in Python. Um, I think that Python is a really powerful tool that you can use because you don't have to. Um, it's re it's really easy to pick up as a beginner because you don't have to like deal with like complicated syntax in like uh, languages like Java or things like pointers in C or C++. So it's a, it's a great program language to start up. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go. So first, uh, how to install. Uh, for the sake of time, and because I already have it in this computer, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to install it. But I do have this link in uh, for a YouTube video that will teach you how to do it in a Windows machine. If you need help in how to do it on a Mac, uh, I can look it up and send you information. I will be posting this um, slides later too, so don't worry. And for those who want to like follow along or like I just try out some of the commands yourselves, I will be posting this link to the, the chat is not coming up. Oh man, just a second. I'll teach. All right. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, well, if you look up uh, in Google online compiler, it will probably be the first link. So you can, uh, you can follow that and you will be able to follow along if you. But I'm not sure why the chat is not coming. Um, did you click on the more option at the bottom? Um, let's see, I do more and then it says chat. I click on it, but nothing happens. So, with, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So the first thing we we have to do in any programming language is learn how to do the hello world program. Uh, it's just like a, a really easy to a really easy way to get started with the syntax and all that, and just like to have that like feeling of accomplishment. You know. So in Python, it's really easy. You just do like print hello world. And unlike other programming languages, you don't have to use semicolons in Python to finish your lines. So don't worry, you won't get errors where you forget about them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, do notice that in this case, we do have to use um, quotation marks when we're trying to print text. And you can use either double quotation marks or single quotation marks. But you have to be consistent. You, you can use either or, but you have to be consistent in that, like, see in this example, uh, I'm using both as double and here both as single, and it works fine. But in this one, I'm using uh, a double and a single, and it's going to give me a syntax error. So just be aware of that. Yeah. And uh, if at any point you have any questions, just uh, you can un unmute yourself and just ask me. So now uh, for escape characters, uh, let's say you want to print uh, a quotation mark because like you want that to, to appear in, in your text. But like I said before, if you try to like use one or the other in the same string, you're going to get a syntax error. Like in this example, see, I'm trying to use um, double quotation marks here. But then within that, I'm trying to use another one. So basically, the program is thinking that this is the first one. This is the, the thing that I'm trying to print. And that this is another one. And it doesn't know how to, what to do with it. So that's why it, it throws a syntax error. So what we do is that we use an escape character, which in this case is the backslash character. And uh, think of this as uh, this backslash character. to It removes the ability of the of the quotation marks to have like a special like skill in the program. So like if you see here, I'm doing like Robin said, backslash quotation mark, I want to backslash quotation mark and then end my string. And you can see I get the 
I get my output and not syntax error. So let me just silence this. Sorry. Uh, so yeah. So moving on. Um, uh, other types of escape characters are like the new line, the tab, and the single quote. Uh, usually you use a new line when you want to print several things in, in several lines. You could also accomplish this by using several um, print statements in separate lines. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to like do it in a single line with a single print statement, sorry, what you can do is use the, the new line escape character. Uh, which will do something like this, like this is first, this is the first line, escape character is the second line, escape character. And you can also do tabs. So like like here, this is a tab. And uh, like I said, you can use uh, quotation marks or even a backslash too. So, yeah. so now uh, moving on to variables. Uh, variables are very important because they hold the value of your data. And a variable name has to start with the letter or the underscore character, and it can only contain alphanumerical characters or underscores, which is like A through C and um, like zero to nine on the underscore. So you can't use things like uh, like money sign or or like asterisk or things like that. So just be aware of that. And they are also case sensitive. So in this, like in this example, H, all lowercase h with a uppercase and then all uppercase h will be three different variables. So be careful of that. And to that end, be try to give meaningful names to your variables because you don't want to end up in a position where like you're all happy when you're writing your script or your program. And then you're using it fine. And then like three weeks after that, or yeah, three weeks after that or something like that, you want to use it again and or edit it and you don't know what you wrote because you did like in this example, it's just an example, but it's kind of bad practice. Like I just said, X, Y, Z. Uh, you would want to do something like, I don't know, like H equals nine, uh, price equals 10, things like that. So you have like, um, a good understanding of what your program does. And it also helps when you are trying to share your program with others because they will be able to know what it does and they will be bothering you with like, please help me. I don't know. Um, so yeah. And as you can see, like you can do like simple like math operations. These are pretty intuitive, just like plus, plus, minus, times, on, over. So yeah. So now, uh, what if you want to use variables? What if you want to print variables along with text? So what you would do in this case would be to, you can use commas in your print statements. What this will do is we'll insert the variable and then it will automatically add a space. So you don't have to worry about that. So in this example where our variable holds the value of ship and we're printing cool org comma is a cool organization. And the output is ship is cool organization. Again, notice we're going to have to add a, uh, a space. So, yeah. Do you guys have any questions so far? Nope. All right. So now uh, we're going to move on to lists. Uh, these lists are basically like imagine like single variables. A single variable that holds many variables within it, which you can then index. So uh, the index will start at zero, and you like the first value in the list will be, like say, um, list at zero, and then list at one, list at two, list at three, and you will be able to access those those values in that way. The syntax in this case to to create a an empty list is my list or whatever you want to call it equals uh, brackets. And to add to the list, you can use the append function. So in this case, you have like a, you can either start it out as with some um, value strings, this, and then you can print it. You can print the first, um, 
the first value and it will to like Robin or in this case, even though it says three, you know it's the four because it starts at zero. So like in this case, we'll be chalk. Uh, now uh, you can append to it, like I said, you can do like the list of the name, the, the name of the list dot append, and then uh, whatever you want to add to it. And then if you print it, if you print the whole list, it's gonna return all this. Okay. So now continuing on with lists, uh, you can also add empty, you can also create empty lists if you know that you want, uh, sometimes in your programs you want to add values to a specific parts of the list before adding anything else. So in that case, what you can do is create empty lists of specific sizes. So in this case, the way we do that is using the none uh, key uh, keyword. And think of none as in like, just a null variable as in like, it holds nothing, it means nothing. Then again, if you do try to read it or print it or whatever, it is gonna give you a, uh, an error. So be aware of that. Or what you could do is just give it empty spaces. So in this case, you can see like Python is CC in the sense that it's kind of like intuitive. Like in this case, we're just saying empty equals none times 10. That's gonna give me 10 non spaces or spaces equals empty space times 10. It's gonna give me 10 empty spaces. And if I try to like print space at two, it's gonna give me two. And uh, I just noticed something. Notice how in this case, I didn't have to do the, the print statement. And this is because in this example, I'm using the, the command line version of Python, which executes the, the commands as you write them. And in this case, you don't have to use the print statement. But most of the time, you will be writing scripts, which will, which then you will run. So in those cases, you do need to use some statements. Um, so continuing the example, I'm saying, okay, spaces at two is not empty. And if I print the whole list, you can see that it did just that. And um, like, like in this one, if I create an empty list and then I try to add something to it, at an index that hasn't been initialized, it's going to give me a, an error because the index is out of range. At, at this point, the only thing I could do is temp at, at zero, which is the first element. Uh, a nice thing about them is that they can contain different types. So in other programming languages, most, most of the time uh, you use arrays, which can only contain a single, you, can only contain a single type. So if you want it to contain strings, it will only contain strings. Or numbers, it will only contain numbers. In this case, you can use whatever you want. You can use strings or booleans, which in, booleans are um, variables that are like either true or false. Those are the only two possible values of those kinds of variables, and or numbers. So yeah. So now continuing on. If statements, uh, they are logical blocks used within uh, programming. And given the state of your program, you might want to do something different. So like say, uh, I mean, this is kind of like just English, like say, if this happens or if this is true, just do this. So in this case, let's say X equals two and Y equals seven. So saying if X equals five, print X equals five, you see that it does not happen because X is not five. Um, if y equals two, and uh, sorry, I, I forgot to add this information, but when you want to say that something equals something in an if statement, you use a double a double equal sign instead of a single one. I will be editing this uh, slides with anything that I miss, and I will update them for you guys to, to see. Uh, okay, continuing on. Uh, Say if y equals two, print y equals seven, nothing happens because y is not two, it's seven. And then finally, if y equals seven, print y equals seven. And it is, so we print. And also notice that I think I have that in the next one. I don't, okay. So in if statements, it will, in Python in general, you don't use uh, brackets or anything to separate your blocks of code. What you do instead, Instead, you use uh, tabs. 
So you see how you do if x equals 5, colon, and then like you see this space right here, that's a 10. Uh, you have to be very careful about the way you edit your Python scripts. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to get a bunch of errors and you may not know what they're, why the, the reason for those errors is. And yeah, it, chances are it will be the, the test. So be careful. So if statements continued, uh, what if you want a general case only if the first condition is not met, uh, you can use else blocks. Um, think of them as your default case. Like say in this case, um, we have a, sh a variable called ship member, which is true. So we're saying if ship member is true, then you're going to print this, else you're going to print that. And notice again, like the, the colon and the text. And else, and in this case, since it's true, you're very in a blue. Let's go. Um, yeah. Uh, any questions? So now. All right. So continuing on, uh, you may also have several specific cases and then a general case like your default. Uh, what you can do is use elf if, elif blocks, which is just else if. So remember that only one block will be executed with, like within your blocks. So in this example, we're saying, okay, x equals five, y equals 10. If x, if x equals six, and we're gonna print this, L, else if y equals 10, we're going to print this. And, <laughs> excuse me, uh, in this case, y equals 10 and x is not 6. So what we end up printing is uh, printing this because x was not 6 and y was 10. And in this case, you can see that uh, we're saying if x equals 6, we're printing this because x was 6. And then we're, ch we're changing. Um, Actually, uh, this should have been another value, but it works either way. We're changing y to be 10. And you would think that, oh, well, now I'm going to like follow to line 36. And it's going to say, OK, since y equals 10, we're going to print this. But like I said before, we're only going to print one. We're, we're only going to execute one of the blocks. So we won't, print, we won't be printing this, just this. So yeah. So now uh, loops, uh, they basically just uh, repeat a sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. Uh, it's again, this goes back to kind of like English. You can intuitively understand them as in like why loops happen uh, while the condition is met and uh, for loops happen, uh, for loops define the start and end point. So they're actually useful when you know how many times you want your loop to repeat. So the example in this case, we're starting with our variable i at one and with a number at seven. And we're saying, okay, while our variable is less than the number, we're gonna print it and then we're gonna add one to it. So we add one, two, we're gonna print one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then when our variable i is seven, we're going to say, is 7 less than 7? It is not. So we're going to exit our loop and finish the first. So, yeah. uh, so now continuing on with loops. It, it is used, like loops and lists go well together in that like you can like go through them with a for loop. So we're saying like for every value in a list, do something with it. So in this case, I'm saying for name in this list, print it. And as you can see, like we're printing Robin and all of these. Great. Uh, any questions till now? Nope. All right. So now continuing on with loops. Uh, oh, this is the notice. Yeah, like a. Uh, Python does not use curly braces to separate codes of blocks. It uses indentations of tabs, so you need to be careful of how, to, how you edit your, your script. Just 
give me a second here. There we go. Yeah. So now uh, I added this function because this is, um, even though you don't really need it to like actually start like writing code in Python, I thought it's a, I think it is a really useful function. It basically creates a sequence of numbers, the range function. And the way you do this is by using that like range, the syntax is range, your start value, your end value, and your step size. So in this case, we're saying, okay, for i in range eight. So we're gonna, it, it starts at zero. If, if you don't give it a, a, a start value, sorry, you're gonna um, start at zero and you're gonna go all the way, all the way to one before your end value. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you do give it um, a start value and an end value, it's gonna start from that and it's gonna go all the way to one before the end. So in this case, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you give it a step size, it's gonna go in those steps. So instead of going like 10, 11, 12, all that, it's gonna go all the way to to the step side before the end value. So in this case, it's gonna go 10. So start at 10. And then since our step size is two, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Yeah. Moving on. So now uh, functions. Uh, functions are just uh, blocks of code that are only, that only run when you call them. And you can pass data to it in the forms of arguments, or you can also call them parameters. And Python uses the following syntax to for, for functions. So you use def, func your function name, and then any arguments you want to pass, and then whatever code you want them to make. Uh, again, just like uh, loops and if statements, we use the colon and then indentations. Uh, also, a good thing is that uh, you don't have to provide the types for the arguments, like in other programming languages. You can just like put the names, and uh, as long as you pass those arguments in the same order that you want them, it'll work out. So I'm, I'm actually going to show some examples, so don't worry if you don't understand. So like uh, here's are some examples. Like say we have a function called full name. And it accepts arguments, first name and last name. And then what it does, it's it prints your full name is first name and last name. You see? Oh, sorry. So we define uh, f name to be Sparky and last name to be innovative. And then when we call the function, we just have to uh, put them in the correct order that we want them. And I deliberately used uh, several, several, sorry, uh, different names for these variables because uh, one of the programs, one of the problems I had when I first started programming was that I thought that they had to have like the same names because that's what my professors used in the examples. So I had I had a hard time with some of my first assignments. So just know that they don't have to have the same names as long as you put them in the correct order, they will work out fine. So when we call the, fun the function, it's going to say your full name is Sparky Innovate. And you can see that in, in this function, uh, it does the same thing. So why did I bother to like add another example? Well, it's because uh, you can think of this function as a void function in that it doesn't really return an output. It just affects the program in some way. In this case, it does it by printing something or like by modifying a value, things like that. However, this but this this function does return something. It returns the string, your full name is first name and last name. And then see here when I called it, when I call this function, I don't have to worry about printing it because it's already doing it. However, in this one, since this since this function is basically returning this value, we do have to use a print statement. So yeah, depending on what you want to do in your program, you will be either using like void-like functions or functions that return something. 
Wait, I'm a little confused. Okay. Uh, on the second example, like I'm confused with exactly what you just said about the return in print. Because I'm trying to see the difference. And the only difference is that you added the return. Right. So basically what I'm doing in the first one, I'm saying, okay, based on, on these parameters, do this. Print your full uh, your full name is first name and last name. And uh, like I said, this function basically acts on the program as a whole, as in like it'll affect it either way. But in this one, you're just basically returning the value as in like when you call this function with these parameters, you can think of it as this statement right here becoming a variable that holds this value. And that is why you have to print it. Uh, do you get it? Is, is it? it? It's more clear. All right, sorry. Uh, and again, like uh, if you have any questions, uh, Post them in the chat. And when, I, I'm not sure why the chat is not coming up for me, but like um, once I am able to see it, uh, I will try to answer all your questions. Too. Um, Jahida asked a question. Actually, oh. she said, uh, "Is that equivalent for, to a for loop in Java?" Uh, to a for loop uh, for meaning the previous uh, functions. I'm not sure. Jahida asked. In oh, the chat. Uh, uh, can you like clarify on what you asked, please? Um, yeah, I was talking about the when you're not the while loop, but the for loop. Well, the for yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's equivalent. The the for loop in here, it's equivalent to the for loop in Java. It's just a uh, different syntax and the way you use it. But yeah, it's basically like you know how in Java you use use like for I equals to some value and then your condition and then your stopping condition. No, and then your like step, your modifier, you know? In, in uh, this case, uh, what you're doing, you can accomplish the same thing with the range function, which in this case is just for i in range eight. It's basically like saying for i equals zero, i is less than eight, i plus plus. Uh, is that better? Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Cool, cool. Again, sorry for not being able to see the chat. Like, I seriously don't know why it's not coming up for me. But sorry. And uh, where did I leave? Okay, I left here. Okay, so now uh, a very important thing is to collect input from a user. And that is very simple in Python. You use, use the input function. And this is the syntax. You use to input and then you prompt. So you can do, in this example, we're doing name equals input, please enter your name, age equals input, please enter your age, and then it's going to print your name and your age. And here, uh, I mean, you can't see it because I'm not running it, but like the way the program would flow, it's going to it run the program, this would appear, and then it would stop. And it's going to wait for me, the user, to input something. And then I'm going to say okay, Sparky. And then it would follow to the second line. And it's going to ask me, please enter your age. In this case, 75. I think that's how Sparky is. Sparky and then um, uh, it would um, print your name is Sparky and you are 75 years old. Right. So now moving on. So now libraries and models, modules. So these things are really important for Python. Because, oh. oh, that's where it is. Sorry. OK, finally got the, the chat to show up. And thank you, Leslie, for reminding everyone to send it. Uh, so yeah, uh, libraries and modules, they're really important for, for Python because they eliminate the need of writing code completely from scratch. So let's say you wrote a really useful function that you think that you might be able to use in another program. You can just uh, you can just import that function into your new program, and you will be able to use it no problem as long as you give the correct parameters. Yeah. 
So some examples how you would do that is just, these are some generic examples I will show you to actually use them. Uh, you would do like say import X. This will allow you to use functions from the library X in the way of X dot function and then the arguments. So this, this is the way you call functions in, in Python. You do like dot. So the library dot the name of the function that is found in the library. You can also do something like import uh, long name as Y. In this case, some, some of the libraries have very like complicated names and you don't want to be typing them every time you want to use a function from that library. So what you end up doing is uh, creating like an alias. So instead of doing like long name dot function argument, you would do Y dot function argument. Uh, or you could also do this from library import x function. So that will let you call um, the function x directly without having to write the whole library name dot function. Kind of that. So yeah. So now continuing. Uh, these are some examples. Here we're using uh, this. Well, we're using from take enter import asterisk. In this case, the asterisk means that like you wanna it's like a wildcard. You wanna import everything from that library. Uh, we're we're also importing uh, numpy the numpy library as np, so we don't have to write numpy every single time. And we in this case we're importing the matplotlib.pyplot function, specifically the pyplot function as plt, so that we don't have to like write this whole thing every every time we try to use it. Uh, it's the same as this one. This is similar to this, like from NumPy Learn Now. And this is an example of me using other, me using my own modules in my program. Like I, I wrote this uh, read netlist module. So I'm importing the, oh, sorry. I'm importing the, the read netlist function and the same for this. So now moving on. So now some useful libraries. Uh, there's NumPy, uh, which I already mentioned. That's good for scientific computations and to compute array operations. Uh, it's basically like free MATLAB. You can think about it like that. There's also SciPy, which includes uh, modules for linear algebra, integration, differential equations, physics, things like that. Pandas, uh, it's good for when you want to like do things like read Excel files or CSV files. It's, uh, it comes in handy. Uh, Matplotlib, like uh, I showed you before, that lets you graph thing, graph like um, basically like generate data visual visualization in two dimensions, like X, Y, and all that. And I'll be showing you examples. And they uh, then take enter, which is like used to create GUIs, which are graphical user interfaces. So yeah, uh, that is actually my last slide. What I'll be doing now is showing you some of the programs that I've done. Uh, you guys can still see my screen, right? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm showing the full screen. Yeah, cool. Uh, so for example, this script, what it does is that, uh, like, let's say you're doing, you're studying circuits and you want to solve a really difficult one, something like this. You want to find the voltage in, actually, give me a sec. Sorry about that. Uh, let's say you want to find the voltage in each node but this is too difficult. You don't want to do it by hand every time. So what you do is you write a script. And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't remember exactly how this works. But uh, what this script does is basically takes in this um, netlist, which is basically just a way of saying that, OK, the value of the of in, in well 
since this is a different netlist, I'm using a, a, a current source instead of a voltage source. I'm, I'm saying that this has a value of uh, negative one. I think it's going in the other direction. And I'm saying that the node, node one and node two are connected by R1. And it has a resistance of, of one kilo ohm. And this is, I mean, this is not related to Python, so I won't try to explain it. But see, if you want to call it, you can just do something like Python. Home with three. Time. And the netlist name. Netlist. And that. And it's gonna return you an or uh, a list uh, containing all the the voltage uh, values for each of the nodes. So yeah, like telling you, Python comes pretty handy. So now I'm gonna move on to this. And um, let's see. Okay, yeah, I forgot to mention this, but uh, when you import um, a module. You could also think of it as basically copying and pasting that code into your code. So in this case, I'm, I'm importing comp from comp constraints. Well, I'm, I'm importing comp constraints as comp. And if I go to comp constraints, I'm basically defining a bunch of values so that I don't have to define them every time I want to use them in my in any other program. So think of it as basically cop copying this and pasting it here. Uh, same for a read netlist. I'm bas basically using this function that I already wrote here and using it in this example, in, in this uh, program. So yeah. Now I'll be moving to a more exciting, I would say. Um, Project for home. Right. Uh, so what this program basically does is that it creates a graphical user interface and lets you simulate uh, the wealth that you will have once you're retired, depending on how the market does and how the how much you spend during retirement, how much you pro, uh, how much you contribute to your retirement, and for how long you do it. And as you can see, I'm using the Tkinter library, the NumPy library, and the Matplot library. Uh, the NumPy is basically just for uh, arrays, like I said. Matplotlib is to display the graphs that we will be uh, showing. And Tkinter is used to build the um, gra graphical user interface. So if I call that, this comes up. and uh, I'm actually really bad at finding this. I should get better, but like I'm just gonna put some random numbers so you can see it in action. So I do like I don't know, like five percent. Let's say the standard deviation return is three percent. Let's say you contribute, uh, you just do like twelve k a year. Uh, number of years of contribution. Let's say you contribute for twenty five, and um, we're actually. So you contribute for 35. And you have 35 years to retire. And let's say you're a big spender and you spend 50K. So this is basically going to run 10 calculations, 10 simulations, sorry. And it's going display to display them here. And in this case, we actually did good. The, the average wealth at retirement is like, a million something, so yeah, yes. But yeah, you can see like you can do like uh, pretty cool things with Python, and this, as long as you know how to calculate the stuff, it doesn't really take that long. And um, like, see, I got a story for you guys. You might be thinking that like, oh no, this is too much for me. Like, I can't do it. Programming is just not for me. In my first class for programming, I really thought that when they said print something, I legit thought that it meant sending to sending it to a printer 
and printing it. Like that that's how bad I was. So and now like I can do this like easy. So just keep at it. It's like with enough practice you'll be good. So yeah, that's that example. And I have another one. I I can't show show it to you in action, but like it's gonna give you like a sense of like why Python is good to know. So last semester in one of my classes, I had to work on a project that was basically a translator for ASL, which is the American Sign Language. So what my team and I ended up doing was, uh, was uh, taking videos of ourselves, doing every single letter of the, the ASL, the alphabet, and then running them through like machine learning algorithms so that it could like the algorithm could hopefully like see this which is A, and tell us, yeah, that's A. But uh, one of the problems that we were having is that we didn't know how we were going to extract just those images, like taking the videos, how were we going to extract the frames of the videos, and then after that, reduce it to only our hands. So I ended up using Python. I used uh, another library, not from Python, but from another, it's a... Uh, from another program, another program in which called Node, to calculate the points in our in our bodies, it would calculate like uh, where your wrist is, where your shoulder is, where your head is, and all that, and that would be stored in a CSV file. Um, I don't think I have an example of it here of the CSV file. I don't. Sorry, but uh, yeah, it would be transferred to that. And then I will use this um, script right here. You see how I'm using pandas? That's what I use to read those um, that information from the CSV to be able to know where in the picture was uh, where our hands. And then I also use the um, OpenCV library for from Python, which is basically like image processing to like crop out specific sizes of the um, specific like squares rooting at the points in which your wrists were. And I also had to like take into account how the wrists were positioned. Like uh, like there's some letters that go like this, others go like this. So you can see like sometimes it would, they would be like more sideways than like just within a single square. So it was a lot of like um, trial and error, but we were able to finish it and uh, we actually got a pretty good grade in it. A pretty good grade in it. But I mean, you can now see how useful knowing Python is. Like you can, it's very dynamic. Like you can use it for whatever you want. And yeah, it's a really nice skill to have. Um, yeah, uh, do you guys have any other questions? All right, I will stop sharing for now. And also, I wanted to know, do any of you uh, have any uh, like programming background or programming experience at all? I'm currently taking Java, so that's exciting. Nice, uh, what uh, uh, class are you taking, 110 or? I'm taking um, the 205. 205, nice. Nice. So it was really interesting, like trying to compare Java with Python. Like I noticed that you guys don't use like, um, like you know how in Java you're supposed to say like int and then your variable name equal to something. Here you guys did not use that. And then also, I don't I don't know if I missed this, but I think you don't have to create like a class. Yeah, you don't have to create classes. That's uh more like free-handed i feel like mm -hmm. it's more like a board and you just it's more straightforward i would say yes yeah like uh, that's uh actually one of the uh, the main reason why i started using python was that uh i noticed that in my interviews uh i was trying to use like programs like c or java but that was like basically overkill for what they were asking me to do they wanted me to like focus on their 
on the pro on the problem, not on like what language I was using. So Python is really easy to do. Like what you can accomplish with like a hundred lines of Java or C, you can do in like ten with Python. Just an example, but yeah, it's really nice to have. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I took my uh, courses all the way up to, to CSC two hundred and forty, which is like mostly C++ and C and it's a lot of work. So it's like a yeah. lot of pointers, allocations, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it gets, it gets bad with pointers, but yeah. Pointers are fun. But... Kevin, Minecraft mods, yes. Nah, but Kevin, pointers are not fun. What are you talking about? Uh, but yeah, like I see that uh, some of you know MATLAB. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good skill to have. So it's great. Mm. Oh. I also know a little bit of a assembly language as well. Assembly? Oh, man, nice. Yeah, like props to you. Like, I forgot everything about assembly. But, but yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. React Native. Yeah, like, uh, I, I do have to learn React, Daniel. Yeah. yeah <laughs> lately, like... lately. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say lately I was thinking of like finding my own free time to like develop my own, my own little indie game, you know, with the Unity engines that I have installed on my laptop and my de gaming desktop. So you should yeah. definitely go for it, man. It's a good thing to have in your resume too. Like, and it's pretty satisfying, yeah, when, like your program run, and it, especially if it's something that like moves or like it's has like a interface that you can like interact with. It's really great. Right, and it's also like learning a new language as well, like learning a C sharp, you know, oh, yeah. Unity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely helpful. So, yeah. Uh, so, coding software. I think uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, it's called like a. Uh, I think Alice is it? I'm not sure. It's like you mean the drag and drop one, where you use like uh, take lots lots of code and drop in order. Alice, I think yeah. I think there's multiple. I think Scratch is another one as well. I haven't heard of that one, but I I have heard of Alice, but, but yeah. But yeah, those are uh, like pretty good beginners one. Like it, it gives you like the fundamentals so you can like move on to like more like uh you'd say like useful stuff. I'm kind of salty that they taught us Java to start off instead of Python, Bro, I, I wish. Know, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that now they are like using, now they are doing Python, I'm not sure. But. Yeah, yeah I, I think the reason why they had to start off with Java is because I guess they're, uh, they're uh, paradigms, you know, because they want us to learn about the paradigms and the patterns and stuff like more than the, yeah. 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 It's kind of like with uh, my CSC 240 class, there is like two of the language, of, uh, two languages, uh, Prolog and scheme, and those aren't very useful languages. But I guess the more important thing about them is like, is their uh, paradigms themselves? Yeah, yeah. Which is what I, I guess, missed off from the class. Yeah. And Luis, I'm not really good at MATLAB, but I can make a workshop for you guys, and uh, we'll try to get it started and share share it with you guys soon. And yeah, sorry. Honestly, this was really cool. Um, I feel like if I feel like if we like build a little bit more off this, this would be something cool to continue on. Definitely, yeah. Like uh, I, uh, I actually enjoyed making the slides because, uh, like, once you're like more advanced, like, like you're basically just swimming in like Stack Overflow, which is like this thing where you can like look at the any problem that you have with programming and it will likely return an answer. So going back to the basics was pretty nice. Like just right in the middle. That's great. And I'm glad that you guys liked it, like uh, like this for you. So like, you did pretty well to cover things, bro. Thanks, Good job. Thanks. <clears throat> right. Uh, do you guys have any other questions or comments? <clears throat>